It's December. You want to finish off the year strong? Well, you're already doing a great job because you're watching the best fitness and health and entertainment podcast in the world. And to celebrate, all you awesome viewers, here's the giveaway for today's episode. One of you lucky viewers is going to get free access to MAPS HIT and MAPS SPLIT. So HIT is high-intensity interval training, but MAPS does it the right way. So we put it together in a way that's effective, not just a bunch of exercises thrown together to make you sweat, which is stupid. And then MAPS SPLIT is a bodybuilder split routine, again, done right. So you get free access to both those programs. We got to do the following. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Make it a good comment. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you get free access. You also have to subscribe to this channel, though, and turn on your notifications. Also, those two programs, MAPS HIT, MAPS SPLIT, are 50% off all month long. So if you just want to buy the programs and maybe you didn't win because you didn't leave a good enough comment, you can go get them right now at half off. Here's what you do. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code Dece December 50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. All right, so there's literally, th oh, it seems like a thousand exercises for biceps and triceps. And we know that you want to hit That's different an exaggeration. exercises <laughs> to hit different parts of your arms. So the challenge is, which exercises do I pick? Uh, how do I know what the best combination is? Here's a great tip, okay? When it comes to biceps and triceps, there's really only one factor you should focus on and maybe a secondary factor for biceps. But here's the main factor, elbow position. Do exercises where your elbow is by your side, in front of your body, over your head, or even behind your body to hit those arm muscles from different angles. And then when it comes to the biceps, you might also want to consider hand position since the biceps controls that. Other than that, uh, there really isn't much difference between different exercises. Now, I know Justin can't contribute because he doesn't train his arms really at all. Not at all. Even those arms are massive. I mean, they, <laughs> this, they dwarf your guys. This time. actually was maybe the single best uh, tip for building my arms that I ever received. I wish I remember where I, I read it or I first heard it. Um, but it was like, I, I, at that point I didn't really understand the importance of manipulating the strength curve. And I think that's what you have to talk about right now, because someone who said you hears, uh, elbow position may do a machine that is in, in multiple different elbow positions, but then the strength curve isn't manipulated the same as if you're manipulating a dumbbell or free weight. So you got to yeah, explain so, what's going on. Well, so there's a couple things. One is there, there are different heads to the biceps and triceps, but the attachments are so close together that trying to work the inner head or the outer head or you know isolate the different parts of the muscle really is kind of a waste of time. But there are a lot of different exercises that seem different. For example, like you look at triceps, right? There's a press down with a rope, press down with a bar, press down with your palms up. The tricep contributes zero to hand or you know supination and pronation. So really you're doing the same exercise a bunch of different times. When you're changing elbow position, what you are doing is you're changing the length of the muscle. Uh, so bicep gets shortened or lengthened depending on the elbow position. Same thing with the tricep. And then what you're referring to is the, I guess, the, the where the weight is the heaviest or the lightest, right? So if I do a preacher curl, the weight tends to be heavier here at the bottom. If I do a drag curl, well, the hardest part is probably here towards uh, the top. So that's one of the things. But the other thing is really just the, the, the lengthening and shortening of the muscle. Like my bicep is short when it's up here. When it goes down back here and I'm fully extended, that's like a stretch, right? right? So the muscles are getting trained in those different kind of length positions. That makes the biggest difference. But you, you see people all the time, right? They'll go barbell curls, and then they'll go wide grip barbell curls, and then they'll go dumbbell curls, all with the elbows by their side. And they're almost doing the same exercise a bunch of different times, just using dumbbells and barbells. Well, you see, too, people want to make sure that they're keeping this constant muscle tension. Uh, and so a lot of times the, the reps will get shorter and shorter uh, because they're focusing on sort of the peak of it, right? Mm -hmm. They're trying to get the squeeze and the feel versus going through the full range of motion, which is going to help to then strengthen, you know, even uh, further in terms of like the, the muscle potential. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I was guilty of this for years. I just, I assumed that if I was using a different tool or handle or machine that I was hitting the bicep different, mm -hmm. you know, when like to your point, uh, if your elbows positioned in the same exact place, you can use five, six different tools, uh, 
uh, and hold holding it right to do the exercise, and you're not really doing it different. You may as well have done 15 sets mm -hmm. of the straight bar curls because everything you're doing is exactly the same. And learning to position your elbow in different places for both buys and tries. And I tell you, it's one of those things that you'll. Uh, it was one of the most massive arm pumps I ever had the first time I pieced this. Yeah, together. once you do it, you know. Yeah, you can feel it. Yeah. So, like, I'll give you an example of three exercises that would do that for the biceps and for the triceps. So you could do a barbell curl, so that's elbows at your sides. You could do a preacher curl with elbows in front of your body, and then you could do an incline curl where your elbows are kind of hanging behind your body. And then for triceps, you could do a close grip bench press, right? That would be elbows kind of in front of my body. You could do a press down, elbows uh, on the side of my body, and then I could do some kind of an overhead tricep extension where my elbows are by my head. Those three elbow positions really give you more bang for your buck than if you do three exercises that are different, but the elbow position is the same. And once you try this, you'll really feel a difference. Um, otherwise, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the exercises that we do, sometimes you look at the combination, like, well, you're kind of doing the same thing three different ways. So right? are you saying that if I'm on the cable machine, I just keep grabbing different like handle Dude. configurations that that's really same not thing. like maximize my potential. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I remember when I was younger and someone would said to me, yeah, if you do a, if you do press downs with a supinated grip, right? So if you grab the hand, the tricep bar with your palms up versus your palms facing down, you'll feel more of a squeeze on the inner part of your tricep. Yeah. And you know where that comes from? When you supinate your hands, it forces your elbows in a little more and you're feeling your tricep press up against your lat. It really doesn't change <laughs> muscle activation. So, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things. But yeah, it's like, and it gives you, typically I'll pick two or three exercises where the elbow positions. In fact, if you own any of our MAPS programs and we have multiple exercises for your arms, you will almost always notice yeah. that we do this yeah. because it's uh, it's super effective and it, it makes a big difference. But yeah, isolating between the different heads of the bicep and tricep, maybe the tricep a little bit, but it's kind of you know an exercise in futility. Now, you know, do, no you, do you see any value in the order in which you do those exercises? Like if, for example, doing a bicep curl in the shortened position versus uh, the long position. Like, do you think that matters very much or the, the value is really in changing that up? Sometimes yeah. I do. I start my three bicep exercises in the shortened position and other times I do it in the lengthened position. That's a great question. I don't think there's a huge difference, but I tend to personally pick the heaviest exercise first or the one I can handle the most weight with first, just because it's the heaviest and I want to do that first so I can do the most load. And then I move to the lighter exercises, but I don't think it really makes a huge difference. The other thing I would consider would be maybe compound first, right? Close grip bench press is a compound lift. Yeah, Probably dips. would want to start with that before right. moving on to the, you know, the, the single joint kind of isolation type stuff. But yeah, it makes a it makes a huge difference. Speaking of exercise, that video that you sent us on the cool mitt. Oh, I know from uh, Andrew Huberman. Is it Huberman? Is that how you say it? Is it my saying that? Yeah, Huberman. Yeah. Super fascinating what he was bringing up in that. Video. Crazy. Yeah, I was so I so I was familiar with the studies that were done on that. I think about six months ago, people were sending me these articles, and it was so weird, right? So essentially, what it is is there's this device that cools the palm of your hand. And the blood that flows through the hand, then go. it's cool. It goes to your core, and it cools the core down. And this improves, I guess, stamina, right? Mm -hmm. Stamina and endurance to the tune of like 300% in yeah. some of these tests that Crazy. they've done. Yeah, insane. The example he gives is they used, and I, I think it's on the website, on the CoolMit website of the 49er who tested it, right? So he said, you know, that you test it out first by basically maxing, doing your max of something. So I think they did like uh, 10 sets of 10 of dips in yeah. a workout and did as many as he could till failure. And then he came out doing like 160 or 170, something like yeah. that, right? And then they went back like four or five days later using the cool mitt in between rest periods. And he was able to do 600 <laughs> in that workout. Now, the crazy part that I thought was extremely fascinating Okay, so because it doesn't make you stronger, it doesn't necessarily build more muscle. But because he used that and he it was able to what 5x his work capacity mm -hmm. in, in a single workout right away. The part that I found most fascinating was when he came back a third time to do the workout with no cool mid again, he now was able to do that. 600 reps again without right. so, the cool. So like it's stuck with him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So his body actually, you know, adapted or acclimated to that much volume in a workout where he wasn't able to even come close to that before, but now using this tool was able to do it. Well, that's the interesting part because now you, 
you can kind of sort of uh, realize that you don't need to add that for every single workout. It's not something that like you're going to be reliant on that. It, you're actually teaching yourself neurologically how to do like that uh, amount of volume. And so your body sort of acclimates to that just by teaching it. I want to try this so bad because what, what I think is would be the limiting factor is I can't imagine if my, my max on dips was 150 in a workout and I've never really done more, too much more or less than mm -hmm. that. That's my peak. And then all of a sudden I do a workout where I get 600. I can't imagine how fucking sore I would be. Yeah. So that's what I'm I curious know. about is does it cause more muscle damage? That, well, that's he says he said in that in that video that I was I sent over to you guys that it does seem to mitigate how sore they get. Now, how much I don't know until I try it and, yeah. uh, and apply it myself. But that's the the first thing that comes to mind to me is like okay, if all of a sudden I five x my volume on an exercise in a, in a single workout. The I got to be an unbelievably sore from that, and then that's got to hinder your recovery process because of how much damage I or would imagine. Or maybe when you come back, like, and you didn't use the mitt, and you applied that same amount of new volume of reps, like, how sore you were then as opposed to, like, using... Because the thing about it was interesting. It's like, you know, the core temperature plays a big factor in, in all of that in terms of, like, your your muscles sort of giving up and giving, giving, giving out. Uh, and, and so to... To be able to come back and then do that same volume, it would seem that maybe you're you're going to produce that same kind of byproduct that would get you sore. It's weird because it's it's almost like it's uh, taking off. Okay, so you you buy a new car, right? And without a rev limiter, the car can go you know 200 miles an hour. It's a supercar, but you know they put on a 140 mile an hour rev limiter. It's like you're taking the rev limiter off and maximizing your performance. What I want to see are long term studies. Does that then contribute to right. faster gains and you know and strength and muscle? Even if it didn't, though, right? Even if it did none of that, if it just improves your performance, what it could mean for athletics? That's where it's, I see it's it. It's crazy. He, what's he, the stickiness of it? You know, how long does that last? Yeah, in terms of like, yeah, but, can I apply that uh, multiple? But times? let's say it does. Okay, let's say for example, even if it doesn't last, yeah, even if you just got it temporarily, it still would Dude, be. If you could sure, increase your work jump. capacity in a matter of a single workout, heading into game time exactly. or something, like yeah. imagine that. Imagine like using. Totally. So I see, I see massive application here for like a fighter. Like imagine using it before the fight. Yeah. Imagine someone being able, and you you're training like like let's say uh, speed of punches like power punches in a round like I don't mm -hmm. whatever the max like this athlete can do and then they use these cooling mitts in between and now he could potentially get 30, 40, 50, 300 percent more output. That's insane. Bro, you just okay. You you just made me think of something. Are we going to start seeing cooling mitts in the corners? Of the fighters, for sure. I mean, unless smart. they get banned, yeah. Unless it ends up being like an enhancement tool, and they say you can't use it. Why would they ban it? I, I don't know. I mean, it's not our. It's not. They ban. They ban. They, yeah, but they ban other stuff that's stupid. You know, creatine's been banned before. Come on. Did they ban creatine? At yeah, sports? some 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 sports have not anymore. But yeah. early on, when it first came on the scene, and they didn't know, and they weren't sure about it. Yeah, anything like that. that works uh, for the yeah. most part, they they try to eliminate. Well, <laughs> you know, people from using. Well, here's one of the cool thing about athletics. Traditional sports that I like to see. I'm not a huge traditional sports fan, but what I do like to see is that there's always that one person or that one team that discovers that game changing, uh, you know, advantage. Technology. Uh -huh. It's it, but it's so short lived because yeah. very quickly yeah. everybody adopts it. It's like in it's like football in the in the '60s when the first you know guys were taking D ball and you know lifting weights and all of a sudden everybody's like why are these guys crushing us and then you know it didn't yeah. take very long before everybody started doing yeah. the same well, thing so yeah it's interesting it just reminds me of when i was a kid and i went to a lot of spring training um in, in arizona and i was able to um get on the field this one time with the a's and they're they're going through practice and everything and there's this new technology somebody was introducing to the players and they were trying to get this up and launched and and uh, they had all this speculation around it that it was going to like increase uh, the way that they could identify how the ball moved and they'd be able to hit it further and all wow. this kind of stuff and all these claims. And it was like basically these goggles that had like strobes, uh, strobe lights in them. And so it, it basically, you, it would slow, you know how strobe lights, it kind of like slows down the movement. Wow. And so as, as the, the pitcher released the ball, oh they could God. see how, you know, where it was going because it kind of slowed down. But there was a lag to it, right? So, so there was a lot of you, know, so you could whips. see it better, but it, it, it yeah, already got by you. By the, the time timing was all screwed up, and and so we, I was sitting there watching with my brother, just fascinated. But every now and then, somebody would just crank it. This guy cranked it so far, it went 
like over and into like the freeway. It went like at least like a uh, hundred fifty yards past like okay. the stadium. So you know what the challenge is with stuff like that is your if, if it throws your timing off, then it's almost like a waste of time, right? So like for example, fighters or people who get into sports that involve punching, right? They think that if they wear if they hold weights and shadow box. It'll make them better boxers. Oh, with, with like heavier, heavier weights. Yeah, and but the problem is, yeah, if, you're used to 12 ounce gloves, and so that's terrible. It, well, it just idea throws your timing off. Yeah, right. It's so a whole like new skill you're developing. Let, yeah. So let's say the cool mitts only work for a short period of time, but they do work. You're gonna have to train that way. You mm -hmm. got to train that way, and then get in the ring that way because it could. You could totally throw off your which in in fighting sports that makes total sense total of how sense. you could do it because yes. you that's how you would train you would use it then you get right in the ring and you box so I don't I see a lot of application there other yeah. sports it'll be interesting to see how it all it all pans out but super fascinating it's crazy technology. speaking of things in the eyes uh, like you said Justin there was a study that just came out on uh, red light therapy for eye performance. So they hmm. took people, in fact, I'm going to pull the study up just so I can make sure I'm quoting it properly. So they took people and they, and they gave them this red light therapy. So like Juve, right? So we work with a company called Juve that has it. So a once, this is a summary, and this was in neurosciencenews.com. Uh, a once weekly three minute exposure to long wave deep red light activates the mitochondria in the retina, helping to naturally boost declining vision. Whoa, just three minutes? Once three a week? minutes once a week, wow. delivered in the morning, significantly improves declining eyesight. So, this is a study by researchers, and this is like a big deal. So, people whose eyesight starts to decline over time, this is a very natural, non invasive way of improving your eyesight. Just three wow. minutes of exposure. Do you do you guys predict that we're going to see like a surge in this space because of like the whole metaverse and the VR thing and the AR? You got to think mm. that something that would like the unintended consequences of this virtual reality and augmented reality world we're heading into is, you know, where, when in time have we ever had something like these digital bright lights this close to our mm. eyeballs for extended periods of time like that? And what are the potential uh, side effects of doing that? You got to think that is uh, that's something that we haven't evolved doing. That yeah. there's got to be some unintended consequences that are coming like a, down the yeah, pipe. Yeah, it's supplemental, right? So you're trying to like squeeze in all those benefits. Like you would get like from being outside and being in the sun. It's like you know removing all those things and now being inside. I wonder if there's going to be little booths or if it's just too much. Like it's just it's too much artificial light. Uh, I would think it can't be healthy and ideal deal for uh for the eyes it reminds me of when we were kids you remember you watch tv and you get real close and your mom was like get don't get so close to the <laughs> yeah, tv yeah, you're yeah, gonna yeah. so what they do with studies they find you're that cross-eyed it's it's probably okay um maybe some eye strain or fatigue but it's probably okay my question would wouldn't necessarily be is it damaging the eyes but rather would you adapt to what that feel so for example have you guys ever wore full-on VR classes and yeah. done anything, yeah. you get dizzy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because your body's acclimated to the real world. Well, the physics are different. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. what if you acclimate to that and then you go in the real world and you're just super clumsy, awkward? You know what I mean? Because oh, you're yeah. always in VR land yeah, yeah. all the time. So, that, that would be what I would think. Like, That's funny. I wonder if there'd be like a distinctive walk. You could tell somebody was like on VR. Too well, you've you, like, you seen like, hey. you ever, you've had uh, sea legs before, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Have you been on a cruise well, or How about that? when you, you go on a treadmill? You ever go on a treadmill, walk for 20 minutes yeah. and you walk in real life? Yeah. Everything moves like super fast or whatever. It's really yeah. See, I don't. I, yeah, the float. fact that you guys don't think that that much VR could be potentially damaged. I mean, last night, literally last night, Katrina was working late trying to catch up on a bunch of emails from all the holiday stuff, right? And she was plugging away on her computer like at ten o'clock at night. Didn't have her Felix Gray glasses on and stuff like that. I think two, three hours later, she she like closes down. She's like, "Oh my god, my yeah, I eyes yeah. and my she got a headache." It's like. You can't, t I mean, those are all signs that shit can't be good for you, can't be ideal. So I got to think there's got to be some side effects to getting that. And it's not natural light. It's this artificial yeah. bright light that we continue to make brighter and more clear. And now we're shoving it an inch from our face. Well, well sure, it messes with your circadian rhythms. I mean, yeah. because it's it's totally artificial. It's like an artificial signal yeah. uh, that, that we're, you know, giving ourselves, yeah. especially if you go into the later into the night. Yeah. So a big part of, of that can also be as you age, your the elasticity of, uh, you know, like your, when you open and close your retina, 
the muscles that do that for you start to kind of lose their strength. And back to the red light study that I talked about, the, there was a 17% improvement, by the way, in people's declining eyesight. In a, in a, remember, what red light does is it literally gets the mitochondria to produce more energy. So essentially, if I shine it on my skin, then my skin is going to, my body is going to produce more skin cells faster. That's why people notice like less wrinkles and my, oh, my skin looks younger. That's also why they notice, you know, faster recovery because it's getting the mitochondria to move to work even faster. So theoretically, what it, what it would do is cause your eyes to become almost like younger, right? Because the mitochondria starts to work a little faster. 17%, by the way, is a big, that's a very significant boost yeah. in eye performance. And it was such a short uh, period of time. They did it once a week. I, I foresee this being a big deal. Like I foresee everybody having red light in their house for skin, hair. These are, are all yeah. proven things. Are there, as weird as it is, I mean, the science is there. If you go through all the literature. The science is 100% there. Pretty crazy. Which yeah. is really weird. Uh, yeah. Is there anything else that speeds up the recovery of mitochondria like that? Is there anything else that we I mean, are aware diet, of? diet, right? You can eat really healthy, get good sleep. Anything that makes you healthier yeah. will improve the, your mitochondrial health. Yeah. This is a very strange, singular intervention. Like, you just do it for a few minutes and then boom, mitochondria work more effectively. Like, hmm. there's things you can do to improve your skin's health, uh, but you could just shine red light on it and also notice an improvement in skin. Now, what if you do all right, those so things? Right, so it's a lot faster and easier. It's not like, oh, I need to string all these days of good sleep and good diet yeah. and lower calorie in order now, to- Now, I don't this. know if it's as effective. I don't think so, right? I would imagine that sleep, diet, you know, lifestyle is probably the most impactful thing, just like it is for everything else. Yeah. So I definitely wouldn't trade one for the other, but it's it's weird that you have this not, this really, it, it's not a drug. It's, you, you know, you, you look into it once a week and you get a 17% improvement. It has to happen in the morning, by the yeah. way. They showed that it didn't work if it was done in the afternoon. Weird. Yeah, which is another interesting kind of factoid about well, it. Speaking of weird things, I, was, I had this conversation with my son last night, and uh, he just out of the blue is asking me about platypuses. And I'm like, it's like, <laughs> it's like is, this, is this a real animal, Dad? Like, Because I think that he's seen a cartoon that had a platypus in it. and I'm like, yeah, it's a real animal. It's a really strange animal. And we kind of got into some of the details of it. And basically it's a mammal that can lay eggs, right? But also it has a really weird penis, <laughs> okay? It's got like two different um, heads to it. Uh, and, and then of course, as I'm researching this and I'm like, cause okay. I was looking at fun facts and I'm like, whoa, this is weird. So I'm like having to explain to him. The female platypus Like, look at this, this is bizarre, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I guess this other was called in in cheetah. I don't know. Doug didn't get my notes up here today, but uh, a cheetah. <laughs> um, my job. <laughs> yeah, heavy breathing though. That's good. Um, yeah. So a, a cheetah, I, I believe, is the other one. It's it's like basically like a um, a coiled, a, a prickled. Um, what do you call those? Uh, porcupine. They, they porcupine. Thank yeah. you. And gotcha. like a hedgehog, kind of looks like one of those. But so this one is in that same kind of family and it has four heads to it. It's so bizarre. And it only what? uses like the, the first two. They can't figure out what the other ones are for. And I guess like the two helps it kind of inseminate more uh, volume. So it has a more chance did, of breeding. Did you go down the rabbit hole of animal penises? <laughs> I sounds, certainly did. It sounds and like you me would, and my <laughs> son were like just dying laughing because we're just like, this is Dude, so weird. Yeah. It, uh, so platypuses are very strange. Yeah. And I remember learning about them as a kid and there was a whole debate. Is it a, you know, what is it? Is it a mammal? Or what? A mammal at legs. They made a, a special rule for it, which yeah. I think is uh, hilarious. But uh, so animal penises, anything else you learned about uh, animal penises that's, that's true? Yeah, so there's another weird one. Right? I knew it. Yeah, so I knew there's another one. Ducks. So you guys heard of ducks' penises, right? I haven't heard of ducks' penises. <laughs> this it's has not thing. been a topic of conversation Listen, for me before, so I'm very intrigued. It's very weird. It's strange. Like, like nature is bizarre. So mm -hmm. you, have, you have this corkscrew configuration. So it's. So it, they literally screw. It, they literally screw. Maybe that's where it came from. But. <laughs> Like if you put up the notes, it's if like you right see here, one like duck it's just twisting, got, yeah, <laughs> it's a little corkscrew. It's just it's so bizarre. Like it sort of like burrows its way in there. Speaking of well, all this, did you guys see that video I sent you? I didn't even know this was a job, but of course it is, right? There's a job where a person ha they have this big I don't know. It looks like a big ass fleshlight. You guys know what a fleshlight is? Okay, it looks like a huge one. No, and they I'm not use aware. it on a horse when they're trying to get the semen from the horse to impregnate. So literally, it was on Instagram, there's this woman holding this thing, and they go up and they 
basically give the, the horse, the horse a hand off. Yeah. Hand off. <laughs> yeah. And I saw, and she was doing this thing. And I'm like, wow, that's your job. That's a real job. I can't believe yeah. that. And yeah. are you nodding? I guess yeah. you know. Well, you well, of course horses. I know that. Well, yeah, he yeah, was no, on a farm. I've seen it. Yeah, no, yeah, I've seen it for sure. I, you have and seen the it? only thing I have to contribute to this, this penis, animal penis conversation is the viral TikTok that I saw actually just yesterday. And I was not even thinking about that until you guys brought this. What was it? There's a, there's a mom who did a video. I don't, have you guys seen it? She, it's a TikTok video. She did, her, she did a video of her son uh, cleaning out the, the turkey. And in there is the the turkey gizzard. Oh, I saw and it, that. And it looks like a like a penis, yeah, like this it, yeah. big. And the kids like gagging when he pulls it out, and it went viral. So that was the that's the only thing I have oh, to contribute to you guys. Uh, Do you guys have good turkeys, penis. by the way, for your, uh, your Thanksgiving? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was really good. We yeah. so yeah, we used the butcher box one. It was really good. Oh, did you? Yeah. Did uh, you guys use that? No, yeah. no, because my aunt. We went to my aunt, so I still have uh, it. I'm gonna well, use we it had first. yeah, we had a small gathering. Like we were supposed to have this big family thing, it just turned out to be like us and like Courtney's sister. And so we were just, we kept it simple and we didn't have like a whole bunch of items, but we, like everything that was there was so good. So well done. Yeah. So I didn't know this, but did you guys know that a, there's a, a huge surge in house fires uh, during Thanksgiving? Yeah. Cause of the deep fried turkeys. So mm. have you ever seen the videos of people? Yeah. Yeah. And I saw the, one of those videos. If yeah, you splash a little bit of oil, that's it. And then yeah. how do you put it out? Yeah. It's you know what I mean? Yeah, and, so, yeah. and then there's, I saw this video where this guy Super was, volatile. thank God he was in the backyard. He's putting the turkey in slowly. He must have put too much oil already. Yeah. yeah. So as soon as the turkey went in, some of it spilled. Big ass fire. That's where everybody fucks up is they do those big silver ones and that they don't have an oil line, so they don't know where to put Or they put a turkey that is bigger than that they should put inside that. Yes. And then the thing overspills. Well, in this video, yeah. they sprayed it with a hose. Oil fire. <laughs> Boom! Yeah, it exploded. Oh, move. oh yeah. my God, <laughs> that, dude. That's, that's, water. that's terrible. Yeah, we, we had it, we had a really good Thanksgiving. We had the whole family together and right now there's three new babies in the family so we have wow. my son who's the oldest oh, right? so he's a year my brother's son is four months old my cousin has a son so three boys right who's uh, three months old and then my other cousin is gonna have a baby in like four months but boy does it change parties because yeah. there were no babies for a little while yeah, and yeah. parties kind of like eh, well, you gotta put them all in the same school so you could be like the o'doyles yeah, yeah. <laughs> O'Doyle rules. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was it was so great to see these babies and everybody's having a good time. And uh, it really makes holidays fun. Now, Justin's was small. How big, how many people did you have at yours? So for us, it was small, but it's probably big for most people. So we had about almost 40 people. But for us, we could, I mean, if we really wanted, we could invite easily 60 people. Doug, what about you? How many did you have? I think about 16 or 18. Okay. Oh, that's cool. cool. How, about, how about you? That's about where we were, which is considered small for us. Normally, we have more like 30 or so. At, at, this was one of the smaller Thanksgivings that we did this year. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I didn't even ask Katrina. Katrina, Katrina. That's my wife's name. <laughs> you almost just that's added her mom name. and her yeah. together. Yeah. Still putting that together, actually. <laughs> Katrina. Hey, don't you know ever what call I was, your wife the I wrong was thinking name. about Tina, her mom, while yeah. I was saying <laughs> Katrina. Yeah. And I was uh, like, just kind of blended it in there, and I'm still learning her name. So, yeah, no, I don't know why we had such a small one this year. Year, but uh, this was probably the the smallest one I've had since Katrina and I have been together. So um, normally we are 30, 30 plus. You know, it's my favorite holiday, Thanksgiving. It's one of Is mine. It? It's up there. Mm -hmm. It's a really good time. Like it's mm -hmm. like I like it better than Chris. You know why? Because it's exactly like Christmas minus the retail. Uh. <laughs> You know what so, I mean? You get all the same fun. Can I just? I think, but I don't have to go buy a bunch of. I gifts think it's the all. time for me. Yeah, so like, the music's a bit better for Christmas. So be honest. I think the whole. I think <laughs> every, Thanksgiving music. Exactly. I think from Thanksgiving to <laughs> nothing. New Year's is just the best time of the year. Like it's. Yeah. Are you a big holiday person? Oh, I am. And Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving is dog shit. Just so you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not it's terrible. Big, I'm that not cartoon or movie? Yeah, or? dude. Like, come on. Have you watched like any of the Char Charlie Brown? Not stuff? in a long time, dude. Not in a really long yeah. time. You know what? I, so we we started. We did everything early this year, right? So because I went out and got that tree. That big ass monster, yeah. ridiculous yeah. tree. I'm so proud of that too, bro. There, taking that, I can't tree. wait till you take it down. I'm not. I'm paying someone to do it. I hundred percent. Like yeah. after the <laughs> after how what a pain in the ass it was to get it up. There's no way. That sounded weird. There's no way that I'm not going to pay somebody else to come in. Take this tree and shove yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. going to have somebody else come in and, and chop it uh, to but, pieces. So you're a big holiday guy. I yeah. I just. I mean, our house. Our house was before because we didn't host Thanksgiving. We had Thanksgiving at Katrina's uh, family. We actually had our. We broke the rule, right? We had the Christmas decorations up before actually Thanksgiving. Mm. The couple days before we had already had everything, which was so awesome though, because we were able to, we had this, most of us had this week off. We were, got to do our Thanksgiving dinner and then Katrina and I all weekend long just kind of hung out. Like the house was all done already. And we, we started our uh, movie tradition, right? So every night 
from here on out, we'll watch like a Christmas movie. So is we, Die Hard in there? Die Hard will have to be in there okay, because good. the amount of days that we have, all because we started Die early. That's the I best Christmas movie. I will have to pull Die Hard yeah, out obviously. and some of those. You know what one's my favorite? Katrina and I were fucking dying laughing. I'm so glad we waited till Max was in bed so we could really <gasps> enjoy it because you know watching a movie with a, a two year old is like impossible. Um, it's four Christmases. I think that's yeah, my, that's really good. I think that's my favorite. That's the one with mm -hmm. Reese Witherspoon and uh, what's no, his name, not right? Reese Witherspoon. It's, not Re uh, yeah. what's his name. Uh, you're, it's, am I thinking of the wrong one? You are thinking of the wrong one. Damn it. Yeah. It's, uh, God, give me the name of the girl. It starts with a B. I think I forget her, her Brittany. name, but it's, uh, uh, not, and it's not Will Ferrell. I am why it's a uh, swingers guy. Why can't I think? Yeah. Of it's, it's, I Vince, Vince Vaughn. Thank you. Yeah. Vince Vaughn. It's Vince Vaughn and, and someone else, but it's not Reese with No, it's not Reese with it's, it's another blonde girl. No, oh, Reese Witherspoon is in it. God, and Kristen Chenoweth. Let's let's put that uh let's put that is up she there really, on the scoreboard. She, in, uh, <laughs> according to according to this. In yeah. four oh, no, Christmases? No, no, here we are. Oh, yeah. oh, I thought it was someone else. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Mark that's that back up there. Yeah, that's well, it. Speaking of Christmas movies too, so um I told you guys like to check this out at some point. It's called Twas the Fight Before Christmas. It's on Apple. Uh, but it's this documentary, and what's crazy about it, I wouldn't have watched it other than like my friend literally lives in this neighborhood that they do the documentary of. So and what's it about? It's it's pretty crazy story. So this guy is like insanely litigious. He's a lawyer, uh, and he basically makes his money off of suing people. Uh, and he's got this idea that like Christmas should be this grandiose thing that he shares with the world based off of how he decorates his house, and he he makes like. Uh, his house ridiculously covered in lights and like it's this whole thing brings camels and you know and so this other neighborhood basically like kicked him out and, and rezoned so he couldn't like do this didn't have permits to, to do this anymore what a bunch of Grinches yeah right yeah <laughs> but it was like just decimating the whole neighborhood oh my bad yeah so okay. like I mean there's just and this is some of this stuff was left out of documentary so now I've got some of the lowdown from my friend oh it's but, a documentary yeah oh so good was it good it's good it's really it, but oh. it, but you you see and I want you guys to watch it because I want to see what you think of this guy uh because he is uh, he's a specimen and uh that's all I'm gonna say so I don't get sued no yeah. I'll watch it I'll watch it you know <laughs> yeah. you know a documentary we watched last night and it's not really a Christmas movie but it's going it's I told Katrina that going forward I want it to become a Christmas movie for us and that was uh Mr Rogers documentary the, oh, uh, that pulls at your heartstrings. it does that's why I, I wanted that it. it's one. like because it puts me in this like positive feel good yeah. do for others feeling like his whole life was dedicated to doing for others and children and so like that so i told such her, a great message for children it, that he would he would communicate such a good documentary i, I know mm -hmm. i talked about it when we, it first came out what how many years ago it was when it first came out we talked about it on the show but i hadn't watched it since then and i was like you know what i'm in like that feel good mood i'm like let's watch that and, and katrina and i watched it last night and i'm like this should be like a traditional movie that we you know what you know what tripped me out about that was because we're so used to the the how fast media is now right so this like things switch so quick like if you ever watch a movie from the 80s or even the 90s you realize how slow it is compared to media now mr rogers was very slow and calculated but you know he did that on purpose intentionally yeah. because yes. he was anti that oh, he was he anti was speaking to the kids yes yeah. for example one of the things that he did was so brilliant there's actually show this in documentary is he says, hey, you know, boys and girls, do you want to see how long a minute takes? And he, and he does a stopwatch. Yeah, and silent. he puts it off. And it's silent for a minute. But it's so smart. It's so brilliant for a kid because it gets them to be quiet and focus and be present mm -hmm. for a full minute. I thought that was so, it's a so lost cool. Art these it, days. It, it totally is. No, I, the, his brilliance to know that, uh, to see television when it first came on the scene and know what it was promoting what it was doing and then know that there was going to be this massive need for a different message you know other than just because tv when it first came about was i mean still is just about consuming it's yep. selling you whether you're selling people their ideas with news or you're selling them products mm -hmm. on commercials that was really the the purpose of all of it and he was like here's this amazing tool that we can use to better ourselves and that was like the whole evolution of pbs and he was a big part of that Dude, speaking of news have you guys seen the polls that they're taking on americans trust in the media oh god no all time lows well i should and hope so they are <laughs> they are tanking and getting just they're they suck they're so bad yeah. and uh, it's funny i listened to i just started listening to rogan again joe rogan he's going so hard especially after they hammered yeah, him because he for, got attacked. Yeah, and they kept saying he was taking horse dewormer, even though he got prescribed by a doctor. And yeah, yeah, yeah. 
he's hammering them so hard. I did not realize how bad it was. Like, for example, CNN's uh, viewership is down something like, it's like at all-time lows, like 60 or 70%. So my, my theory on all this, is like, and why it's so crazy and why I try not to get so hung up on how crazy and stupid the media is, is that this is literally their last desperate grab. It's a Hail Mary. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's their last desperate grab. Fuck it. We don't got to be honest. Do whatever it takes to get any sort of eyeballs and attention because this the ship is going down. It's it, We already know that our, and already most Americans do not get their news through traditional forms of media on television. Mm -hmm. You're getting it from Twitter and Facebook and for, and YouTube and places like that. You're not going and sitting down and watching the 5 o'clock news Yeah, anymore. you saw that all start uh, once like magazines and newspapers started to lose lose their relevance and so the only way they could get people to come back was to, to the shock and awe titles and uh you know like basically like the the bait and switch approach of getting the eyes and then well, they're just done, giving well, them so whatever they're so here's what's happening right because you think oh they're trying to get more views but they're getting less and less views what's happened is they've attracted they don't have as much of a boogeyman now no they've attracted in a, a very polarized extremist audience and now they're fucked because they have to cater. See, I don't even think them. I don't even think they've attracted that. I think that's all they have left. That's yeah, what exactly. I mean. Yeah, it's I think I think that, only again, it's, it's the they're they're dying no matter what, and this is their only way to hang on to anybody is to you know cater to the extreme left and right, depending on which one. But you're isn't watching. it interesting how we still base our culture off of that? form of media like anything in terms of like oh well this is what we all think now like we still kind of like we haven't completely abandoned that yet. yes and no because we're still we're still dominated okay so we're you know the generation before us is still consuming and still yeah. get wait till our kids are adults yeah well, i mean once our kids are adults like that's going to be you so old news you know what i predict no pun so intended. this uh, so this kind of media fell out of favor a long time ago because people started to favor opinions so what happened is people wanted journalism with opinions. So they don't want to just have someone reporting. Yeah. I want to hear what you think about it. It's more exciting. Right. I feel like what may happen is it may revert back to the old media where there's a new news network and they're like, just reporting, no opinion. Yeah. Here, here's the video. Here's what actually happened. Here's what uh, happened. Here's the whole video. We Not just no like this portion of it. I think we're already seeing what's going to happen and is you are going to gravitate towards people you trust in mediums that you like, where you like to consume, and you'll get your news from that. I mean, how many times have we even heard that from our audience? That was never a goal. We didn't go like, hey, we're going to start mind pumping so we could deliver news. No. <laughs> but people like to hear no. us talk about what's going on in current events. I think you see that with, with a lot of these quote unquote influencers or social media people or YouTube stars is that you're going to gravitate to these people and it's them or people like them that you're going to want to hear yeah. the current events and news from someone who you've built somewhat of a relationship or you trust to deliver it or your values align with theirs. Therefore you want to hear how they break down. Speaking the news. of social media, mm -hmm. the CEO of Twitter stepped down. Did you guys hear this? Oh no. Jack Dorsey just stepped down. Yeah. What's the move? Yeah, what There's obviously a play. Uh, I, you know, my, I don't. I didn't read too much into it. Uh, he said something like, oh, "It just happened. This is better for the business." Yeah. Um, I think what happened is I think Mother Ayahuasca told him to step down. That's what I thought. <laughs> really? Does he look like that with his you know, this big old beard? Yeah. And... No. No. I mean, so here's what's funny. He stepped down as of the recording of the podcast. Twitter's uh, stock is going up. <laughs> what does that tell you? Oh, interesting. Isn't that funny? Mm. I wonder why. I wonder what. I, doing. I don't know. I mean, he might be just just done. I mean, maybe Doug can find an article as to what his his reasoning is. I mean, they had a lot of heat in terms of censorship. Oh, dude, they're 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 looking bad. They're yeah. looking bad right now because they're not necessarily it's just, consistent. It's just diarrhea. Everybody's just spreading, you know, on that platform because you only get so many words to, you know, it's the shock and awe approach. Same thing with the headlines. Yeah. It's like everybody's just throwing headlines out there uh, to get, you know, some kind of radical following. Yeah. I try. I tried to get into it. I couldn't get into I mean, it. I, I have I a Twitter hanging it. around out there, but it's like I just... And I, a couple times I was motivated to do it. Like we talk, you know what happens? I always talk to somebody, another business owner. Yeah. Oh, Twitter crushes They're like, oh us. yeah, we're, we're generating X amount. I'm like, damn, I should be doing that. You know, <laughs> then I go get on it for a while. I'm like, this is lame. I'm not doing this anymore. I, don't, I, don't wanna... I would rather TikTok my way no, through no, life no, no. than You'll catch me on Twitter, Twitter before TikTok, TikTok there. for sure. No, I'm TikToking. <laughs> Doug, did you find anything about why he stepped down? <clears throat> I think he just, you know, what to believe, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. He just feels like the company can do better under new leadership, he's staying on as CEO of Square, though. Okay, uh, which is another company there. Uh, 
Oh, Spe they're part of Square. Speaking too. of yeah. entrepreneurs, I'm going to read you some statistics on one of the most, in my opinion, successful entrepreneurs of all time. You ready for this? Let's hear. Let's see if you guys can guess who this person is. Okay. Maybe, uh, the guy from Virgin. I'm not going to say his name. I'm just going to tell you. At the height of this person's power, they were bringing in an estimated $420 million a week in revenue. A week? A week, a week in revenue. Is this Rockefeller? Hold on. They dominated 80% of the market. So 80% of the market was due to this particular individual. So now- One person. One person was responsible for those, those two things. Uh, I'll give you one more hint. No, it, he uh, wasn't. He didn't operate in the legal market. Oh, oh God! Yeah, so oh, yeah. Pablo, Pablo Escobar. Escobar. Yeah. Pablo Escobar, Dang, bro. Yeah. He brought in four hundred and twenty million. You know, it's always funny week? when I hear stats on like Pablo Escobar. It's like, who the fuck is was who's yeah. the bookkeeper on that? Like, yeah. who and who shared that? Right. Like, how's how do we how do we fact check? It's that probably shit? more, right? Like, it's just, probably more or like or, I mean, or like, do you know how cares? much? Check this out. Drug like, dealers aren't keeping fucking you books can't like spend that. It. Well, well, if you do have a ledger, it's you, fucking unreadable. It, no, it is it is estimate. But look at this. They, they say that he probably was so he's responsible for eighty percent of the world's cocaine. And smuggled 15 tons of cocaine into the U.S. every day. Yeah, every single day. That's insane. Now, have you guys ever seen with the CIA's blessing pictures of his house and like his rooms yeah, and yeah. he's got gold rooms and toilets and mm -hmm. guns, gold, yeah, AK-47, yeah, and tigers yeah. and ridiculous. Like, I guess that's what you have to do, right? You can't spend it on normal things. That is so crazy to me. So you know, someone was telling me that a lot of this uh, NFT shit that we got going on right now, a lot of that is just a way to smuggle. So why so, it's oh, exploding so fast right now. A way to wash right money, now. you mean? Yeah. Oh, what? I just I'd smuggle things. That's like, smart. Right. So if you get, you, and that's like a good percentage of- So if I want to get- This is the same conversation I was having about Bass Pro Shops. What? What? <laughs> You've never? Oh, you mean you and I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I was bringing Justin, that up to somebody. Justin and like, I were walking up to Brass Pro Shops we're one like, day. like, dude, how do they, like, what's the business model here? How do they have these huge, It you never know? has okay. made sense to me. Because Here's that, another fun fact. So I think, I believe it's uh, the seventh largest pyramid in the world. You know what it is? What? A Bass Pro Shop. What? Yeah. Yeah. What? That's a fun fact for you. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. Lame, yeah. right? <laughs> Justin and I were walking up to a Bass Pro Shop one day, and I and like we were going in. <laughs> I remember we, we walk in. I don't know. I it was like, a, place, it was like a weekday, yeah. and I don't know. Maybe there was twelve people in the whole entire fucking ginormous yeah. place. That's and they don't even charge you to get in. Like, the, what what is this business the, model? The, the, the land, the land, the stuff inside of it, the building itself, All the statues, the bear. Like, the so, uh, Justin, is your is your conspiracy that they're a front? Yeah, they're that's what I said. That's a business. Yeah. Or it's it's got to yeah. be some sort of front. Is the is the show <laughs> that the show that Tim Allen does? Is it really based off of the Bass Pro Shop guy or oh, whatever? I have no idea. You guys oh. know the show I'm talking about? Yeah, right? yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah I know it's, what you're talking about, but I don't know. Because he, I mean, that's he. You know, they do like a like a you know a, like a fake version, right? Of yeah. that, it's not a, it's not Bass Pro Shop, but it's like it's similar. That. Yeah, it's similar to that. And so I wondered if it's like loosely based. On the guy who does, who did. maybe they smuggle like protected animals or something. You know mm. what I mean? Like you go in there and you're like, I'll take. No, the, Justin and I, we talked about this, and I actually didn't get a chance to like uh, do a deep dive because I've wanted to dive in and find out more about the company because it just doesn't. I mean, the market. I, I see businesses up, like dude. I see businesses like that where I'm like, how you guys? They're just huge showrooms alive. Well, the other one is the uh, the other one. I I've brought this up before in the podcast years ago when my first experience with Living Spaces. Yeah, Living Spaces doesn't make sense to me oh, either. Right, that one too. Like the, they 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 discount their prices so low that you know they don't have massive margins on it, and then they have these warehouses full of hundreds of millions of dollars of furniture just mm. chilling there. Just sitting there, and uh, you don't see can enough. Can you depreciate it off your taxes or anything, or is there any kind of? Tax there's got to be. There's yeah, got to be some, some some strategy. It's almost like when you ever go to like a really wealthy area where the rent is super high, and you see these little businesses that sell like candles and shit. And I'm like, how are they? How is this candle business <laughs> making any money? I do that all the time. We'll go walk around nice areas, walk into stores, and Jessica's always like, all right, you know. What do you think about this one, Sal? This, there's no way. How the hell are they making this right. money to survive? So city council like votes or gives them some kind of like tax break to come in? I or? think it's, it's just a wealthy person's spouse, oh, husband right. or wife like, or kid. Who's like, let me start a business. I'm like, all right, here you yeah. go. Do your thing. And then they kind of was a loss, but they write off all their taxes. But anyway, back to yeah, NFT. Yeah, the NFT, I think there's something there. Though. Yeah, yeah, okay. So so that's, that's, a, that's not a bad idea. So like if I want to sell you... Some contraband, right? Then I could be like, "Hey, I made buy an the NFT. NFT. You buy, you make some bullshit graphic NFT. You sell it and buy buy it with Bitcoin, and it comes well, along with my. It's the easiest thing to spend Bitcoin. 
right now, yeah. right? Because like well, it's tough to spend Bitcoin on tangible things, right? But you can so on these. You can N- buy these NFTs. NFTs. Well, yes. you can even buy them with cash, right? Aren't yeah. people buying them with cash too? Uh, I don't. I think I don't so. Think so. Uh, no, I think you can. you can. I think you. Can. Yeah. I think you can too. Uh, I um, but yeah, it makes the most sense to do it with with Bitcoin, and to do it to smuggle. You know, I always found that funny is that you have people who have all this money. Uh, that they get through illegal means for whatever. And then the big problem is how do I spend it? Yeah. How do I use it? Without causing a bunch of red flags. And literally their goal is to pay taxes on it. They're like, I want to pay taxes on this so I can use this money. So that's their goal. That's well, not only that, but then the other thing they don't ever think about either is that they have to find a way to create a business that generates somewhat near the amount of money that they're doing <laughs> illegally, yeah. which that's another hurdle you don't think about. Is you're like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll start up this. You my know. wife's hair salon brought yeah, in $45 exactly. million. Dollars exactly. I'm going to start up <laughs> my wife with a hair salon. And then you're like, oh, fuck, I need to wash you know, $3 million a year. <laughs> and she's got eight yeah. stalls. And the math just doesn't make sense. And you're just like, I can't. We have possibly shampoo. Yeah, yeah, funnel enough money through there so you don't even you that it's already hard enough to do that and then when you finally find a way to potentially do that to try and wash all of it is like crazy. Just, oh man. Yeah. Uh hey, uh wanted to bring up a movie to you guys. Have you guys seen uh Shang-Chi? Did you tell me about yeah. this? Yeah. Yeah. You did. It was good. Have you seen it? I have not seen it. It's actually it. really good. Yeah. yeah. It's a new it's Marvel. Fun. It's a new Marvel character. Great if you like f- fight scenes, kung fu fight scenes that are kind of fantasy so there's like superpowers and stuff. Yeah. Funny. It's actually one of their better. Doug, did you watch it? Yeah, did you watch it yet? Okay, I'm still waiting for Doug. I probably will not. Did did any of you watch watch King Richard after I told you? I did watch that. That was was, very good. Thank you. Thank you. That was very good. That's that's nice. Can you do do me a favor, Doug? Go to Rotten Tomatoes. Look to tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes. Look up Rotten Tomatoes. All right, Mater. Hey, and look up look up the 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 ranking. Roger, Roger. I'm telling you, dude, it was a really well made. Well, Marvel always gets good ratings, like even on the bad ones, right? Because it's just like it's got a, a crazy fan base. That this was one of their better home. ones. No, sure. all right. Tell me if I'm, you say it's one of the better ones. I'll, uh, I'll get yeah. it. I'll get to it. I'll get around to it. But I mean, like, like how, how have you guys not? Opinion. How have you guys not watched King like Richard Doctor yet? Strange. King Richard is like a, sounds boring. A, it's a true story. It's an amazing true story. Like, sounds boring. What? Yeah. Stop. It just does. Yeah, it was excellent. Actually, He's really yeah. very He's good. Sportful. Excellent. Right, Doug, it left you wanting more. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah. Will Smith did a guarantee. He'll win an award for it. Was so good. Really? Yes. Song. Yeah, that's sounds, how good it was. Sounds kind of boring. What is? Oh, okay. look at that! Ninety-two percent tomato meter, ninety-eight percent audience score. Shang Chi. Look up King yeah, Richard. Let's see who ranked higher. I bet well, it got high. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> let's, let's see. It's got Will Smith, so it's gonna be up. There. So now, where do you rent? You have to rent it. Uh, no, HBO had it. Oh, oh wow! Look at that. Him, it's bro. a tie for audience score. Ninety and ninety-eight. Oh, okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's I really guess, good. I guess I got to check that. And it out. doesn't have like a crazy fan base of children. That's why it scored so high. You know what I'm saying? So that's where your Marvel is probably so Interesting. high. Interesting. Yeah. Have you guys seen that series on Netflix called <laughs> Explained? Have you guys seen yeah. this? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We got yeah. into it. Remember, we all got into it for our first few episodes. Yeah. So they have a talking about Molly and uh, psilocybin and stuff like that. In yeah. It, right? And then they have, uh, I think they call it by its actual name, not the street oh, name. <laughs> <laughs> MDMA. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But they, they have some really good ones uh, out right now. They have one on like brainwashing. And Is it how another that season? Works. Because it's been out. New been season. Out. Okay. As I say, it's been out for They a have time. one that I haven't watched yet. So I've watched all the new ones, right? And Jessica and I are watching them. And there's one that her and I are like, I don't want to watch that one. It's on the teenage brain. Like, I don't need to watch that shit. I got two teenagers at home. And I try to freak myself out, you know, over all this. <laughs> but there's, um, there's some really good episodes on there about the yeah. mind and how it works and memory and brainwashing. So go check now, that Doug, out. when you go when you go do your family Thanksgiving, do you guys watch a lot of movies together, or, or is none, this, none? So they're mm-hmm. not no TV over there, no TV. No. Oh, really? Is there literally no TV in the house? There's no TV. They in just the house? have a radio. Oh wow! They listen to, they listen <laughs> now, to that, radio stories. We, we, <laughs> we watch <laughs> smoke sig- signals. <laughs> Shut up. Were your, now, were your parents like that growing up? Were they like? I grew up with no TV. Oh wow! Like Katrina. Wow, yes. that's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Wait, Katrina grew up with no TV? Not until uh, until Tina married Troy. He brought the first TV. What? Yeah. yeah, that's why she's so adamant about us not having a TV in the bedroom. Because it's like, first of all, they didn't have a TV forever. Then they finally got one. It was like one TV, rules around it. They hardly ever watched it. It was just Troy who watched it most of the time. So Katrina's like adamant about no TV in our bedroom. Wow. Yeah. I love TV, man. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, me too. So that's a, that was like one of the 
the areas in our relationship. It's one of the big challenges that we've had. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the television Wait, in the house. Didn't you say that she won't watch TV in bed, but she'll open TV. the laptop and watch a movie Yeah, in that's bed. the irony of it. <laughs> we'll carry a, a nine-inch screen into the bed and we'll watch it. And I'm just like, this is stupid right now. We could have a... And I have in my bedroom, they, the, the, they actually, this house has a nice like you know, mounted for a plasma. So there's no wires, like literally across from my bed where it's supposed to be. And instead we have this massive mirror. And so we actually, there was a deal at her and I, I don't know if I told you guys this or not, but in our master bedroom, we have two walk-in closets and there's one that is definitely probably like the woman's walk-in closet. And then there's like the guy's walk-in closet. I mean, there's like, like one's big and one's small. Yeah. Yeah. I one's know. like really big and one's like heels and then higher heels. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause I got, I got this much of the closet. So the, deal, got, yeah. the deal, because I really wanted to put a TV in and Katrina's like, no, no. So, okay. Well then if did you, you really get the bigger I closet, got the for bigger closet. No TV? that's right. Oh that God, was, the, I said, if, if I have to compromise and I don't get to have a TV, which is fine. For okay. Shoes. Then you got to compromise the, the closet. So mm. she did. So I have I mean, bigger mirrors closet. are cool. Like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, real quick, you got to check out one of our sponsors, Paleo Valley. They have some incredible paleo uh, inspired supplements and products. Some of our favorites are their grass fed and grass finished beef sticks. They're not dry, they're delicious. The macros are great. It's a great, convenient snack, long shelf life, so you can take them with you on trips. They also have an organ complex supplement. So if you've been reading about the benefits of eating organ meat, but you can't stomach the taste, Try Organ Complex. They also have a bone broth protein powder. It is the least processed bone, uh, excuse me, least processed protein powder I've ever seen in my entire life. There's no other ingredients, just the protein. No sweeteners, no nothing else. It's one of the easiest protein powders I've ever used uh, for my gut and my digestion. So, and lots of other great products. So go check them out. Head over to paleovalley.com forward slash mind pump and then use the code mind pump 15 for 15% off your first purchase. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Chris FTW8. Besides saving time, what are the benefits of supersets? Supersets. All right, so first let's define that, right? A superset, typically the way that, that is defined is you take two exercises and you do them back to back with very minimal rest. So you don't rest in between. You do one exercise and switch next right to the next one, and that's called a superset. And there's a couple different ways you could do them. The most popular way to do it is for the same muscle group. So two exercises for chest or two exercises for back and so on. There's other different ways to combine them. And then a less popular way would be doing two opposing muscle groups, biceps, triceps, or chest and back is the most popular. Right? So what are the benefits? When you do the same muscle group, you do get a better pump. You are able to squeeze out more reps. And part of the reason for this is you're changing the angle and the exercise. Now, you, could you accomplish something similar by lightening the load of the exercise you just finished and doing it again? You could, but then you miss out on the benefit of changing the angle and the tension uh, and you know just the different stimulus you get on muscles. Supersets are present in a lot of our MAPS programs in at least one of the phases because, uh, in our opinion, there's a ton of value. So I think they're great. Don't get stuck on them, though. Your body tends to adapt and they stop working. But in short periods of time, like three to four weeks at a time, I think they're freaking awesome. Oh, it's also a really quick and easy way to increase uh, intensity and volume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I think what you said is the most important part. Um, I remember when I first found these and started doing supersets, and then I got stuck in this routine of like doing them in every workout because mm -hmm. you're increasing intensity and you're increasing volume. So you're going to probably get a bit a better pump. You're probably going to be sore than you you're used to being the, mm -hmm. the next workout. You might even see some gains that you haven't seen in a while. And so that part of it becomes addicting and then all of a sudden you start doing every workout with all these supersets. I think uh anybody that's trained supersets is probably a fall victim to this mm -hmm. also is that you you do that and you're like, "Oh shit, this is amazing." So yeah. you just start doing it all the time. So it's a tool like anything else. Um, I think it's an incredible tool. I like to typically use it now when I'm crunched for time. So like when I have a, a short amount of time, I'm not going to get a full hour, hour and a half. It's not like a nice workout. A good way I'm, to keep the volume the same with the shorter. That's right. Yeah. Right. I could literally do the the same amount of volume I do in an hour workout. I just now cut it down to 30 because I'm basically supersetting every exercise. Um, and because I do it infrequently like that, it's it, my body recognizes it as like a nov as a novelty, and then it responds really well to yeah. it. Versus if I trained every workout like that, uh, it would have less less value. Now, yeah, Justin, we, I was going to ask you with okay. athletics mm -hmm. because they use supersets but differently, right? And you're the sports guy. 
They'll typically call them what? Not, is it complexes or what's the term that they'll use when you yeah, do like- Yeah, complexes. So a lot of times you'll see these with kettlebells or you'll see with like barbells or dumbbells. Mm -hmm. and, and it's it's basically, they use it more as a way to get through some like tough, like full body, like compound lift kind of movements uh, and, and to perform that like in almost like a circuit fashion. Mm. Uh, but, but again, we're just shortening the rest in between each one of these types of exercises. And so- it's trying to get you to be able to go at that kind of an intensity and sustain that kind of an intensity for a little bit longer amount of time, just like you would if you're going harder uh, and performing in, in the game. Yeah, and it, and it gives you, you're going to get more um, strength stamina or strength endurance. So there's maximal strength and there's strength endurance, uh, which allows you to exhibit this strength for maybe more reps. Once you go too far, then of course it just becomes straight endurance. Here's a couple of my favorite ways uh, to use supersets. And I do, I'll do a superset based workout these days, probably maybe three times a month. And it's usually when I am crunched for time. And so it is very novel for me and I get a great workout when I do it. But some of my favorite ways to do it are, one of them is a pre-exhaust method where I'll do a single joint isolation exercise for muscle and then go straight to a compound lift. And I learned this from... Hmm. Mike Menser's heavy duty book. And this is what a way that he was, you know, he, he said it was a great way to get a muscle to fail, a major muscle to fail without, you know, worrying about the, these kind of helper muscles failing first. So for example, you do like a cable fly to failure, then go straight to a bench press. So what you do is you pre-exhausted the chest, then you go to the bench press. Now you, now you're using the, the delts and the triceps uh, to help you out. And man, does it build up uh, strength, stamina and give you a crazy pump. And if you're really, if you really like pain and you want to work on your legs, try pre-exhausting your quads before squats. Like try sissy Ugh. squats and then squats or leg extensions and then squats. Freaking gnarly. But I swear to God, it blows up your quads so big uh, during that workout. Next question is from Luke Colestios. What are some signs you're not drinking enough water? You're thirsty a lot. It's probably the biggest <laughs> sign. <laughs> the biggest one. Yeah. Actually, isn't, isn't uh, technically the, the if you are thirsty, it's already the it's sign. too late. Do you, right. It means you're already technically uh, dehydration. So here's the problem with that. Is that, that true? It's yeah. Old adage, yeah. yeah. Well, you get, okay. So here's the problem. There's people in the fitness and performance space that say, for example, they'll give this arbitrary number. It's not necessarily arbitrary, but they'll say, you need to drink a gallon of water a day. Then you get like the, the science people and they'll go, no, that's not true. You need much less water. And then the fitness people will say, well, if you're thirsty, it means you're already dehydrated. And the other people will say, no, you're not dehydrated. Okay. There's optimal water intake for maximum performance. And then there's just the amount of water you need to be okay. And if you have that much, you're not going to get negative detrimental health effects. Optimal is typically more than the, than the minimum required for, for no negative effects. So I think we should talk about optimum and not necessarily... Because if you just drink when you're thirsty and you pay attention, you're not going to necessarily have these negative health effects uh, from not having enough water. Or maybe you do, you're just not uh, recognizing them. Yeah, or maybe it's like over a long period of time, right? But if you want optimal performance, a little bit more water makes a big difference. You'll well, feel it in your workouts, you'll see it in your skin, you'll sleep better. Like there's a lot of things that you notice. Well, there, there's, there are different things. And one of the ones, I remember I heard, I heard Justin talking about this one time and uh, I had never thought about it for like low energy. Uh, sometimes yeah. people come in and they train and they haven't really had much water at all for the day. And they're, they just, they're just low mm -hmm. energy and making sure that they, you know, chug a glass or two of water pre before their workout could make a difference on their energy levels. I noticed a difference when I started to make a conscious effort in that. I also noticed something that, and I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to totally destroy this. Like, and, and maybe you guys can help me put to words exactly what was going on, but I went through this phase where I wasn't drinking very much water at all. And I kept, um, I kept hearing this whenever I'd squat heavy. Um, I'd get, like I remember this, you telling me this. Yeah. I get like this pop in my quad mm. and, it, and it would hurt. It would like, it would drop me to the ground. Like after I would freak out, it would feel initially like I tore something or something happened. And then it would feel, it would feel really bad for at least a couple days. And then it seemed to get better and I'd be okay. So I know I didn't tear anything. It wasn't anything major like that, but it happened to me enough times that I could start, I started to connect the dots like, Oh wow. Every time I don't make a conscious effort, to drink at least a quarter of a gallon of water in my, in my day before I got to these leg routines, this would happen to me. Hmm. 
And so long as I always stayed really hydrated, it would never happen, no matter how heavy I went, no matter any other combination of things. And I couldn't quite figure out what Weird. it was. All I knew was it was connected something to me being hydrated yeah. that was causing something. And I don't know if like things weren't lubricated very well, yeah. and so they got hung up, and then they would it, that that popping feeling would happen. Well, I yeah, I can't really you know add to that, but in terms of like joint pain, I definitely have seen a, yeah. a massive difference in terms of being hydrated, not being dehydrated, and having that nagging, achy, chronic kind of, uh, uh, you know, arthritis kind of feel, uh, when I'm, when I'm not drinking enough water that, and my clients as well, I've seen it with them. And, and once they're focused on that too, it's, it's definitely helped to alleviate a lot. Of that. Yeah. For me, it's, um, the color of my urine will tell me a lot, right? So unless I've had B vitamins, which B vitamins will always turn your urine super, but it's a different kind of yellow. It's like, like it looks like it's glowing. But if my if if my pee is like a light yellow, then I know I'm getting enough water. If it starts to get really dark, usually means I'm not drinking enough. And here's one. What about blue? Not blue, blues. <laughs> pretty, go to the hospital, I okay. think, or red, right? Yeah, or you're um, awesome. Yeah, or but so one thing to keep in mind though is if you're somebody that works out often and you don't eat a lot of processed food, and let's say you suffer from like eye twitches or muscle cramps or heart mm -hmm. palpitations, which a lot of times people will say, oh, that's related to not being hydrated. So you just drink more water and it doesn't go away. This is something I figured out for myself. It wasn't that I needed more water. It was that I also needed more sodium. So mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. sodium helps, it's, it's a, an electrolyte, right? It's part of how muscles contract and the body works. I would just drink a lot more water and sometimes some of these things wouldn't go away and my, my urine was super clear and I'd still get certain issues. And then I realized uh, I need more sodium because I, I don't need processed. Even though I salt my food, it's not a lot of sodium. So I, when, we started, when we started working with LMNT, that made a huge difference. And I put that in my water and then boom, had none of those Yeah, it's issues. interesting you bring that up because that's something I found out even in athletics. So I had never played in uh, humidity before. And this was a massive mm. uh, adaptation I had to figure out because – uh, I would be so fatigued and I would, I would be gassed by like halftime and I couldn't figure out like, and I would hydrate, you know, days prior to that, making sure. And this is all that they would tell me is like, and they'd weigh you in and everything to make sure that you're replacing, you know, your, replacing water, your water. Yeah. But I just never seemed to be able to get, you know, energized, like consistently to, to be able to play in that environment other than probably to play it more often and adapt, you know, naturally. But, you know, the electrolytes I started introducing more, uh, and adding like pinches of salt into my water. And I, I yeah. was able to sustain my energy way longer. Yeah. My, when I would train endurance athletes, uh, that was a, that was a big one for me. It was like maybe 10 years into my career. And I started getting, I got one, you know, how it is you get one client and then they'll refer a few friends and they're all in the same shit. And so I had these clients that were triathletes, uh, and one, uh, guy was an, uh, competed in Ironman. So it's a big deal. And that's what I did with them. I'd have them put a pinch of sea salt in their water and it made a huge difference. And why? Because they sweat so much mm -hmm. and they don't eat a lot of processed food. And if you do the math and you look at their sodium versus how much they're excreting, even though they salt their food, it wasn't enough. And so I'd say, add some, and I remember the first guy I told that to, I said, try adding a little salt to your water. He's like, salt water? I'm, not, I'm like, well, not like the ocean, but add a pinch in your water each time and see if you notice a difference. And he came back. He's like, dude, it was, it was crazy. He's like, I, I was like, I felt like a completely different person. So something to, to keep in mind, because if you're like really fit and health minded and you're drinking a lot of water, and then you have these signs of dehydration, and you can't figure out what the hell's going on, and you drink more water might make it worse. You may actually need uh, some electrolytes, or, or in particular, sodium. Next question is from King John King. Have you heard of using Viagra to improve your pump in the gym? Is there any benefit to this? <laughs> I heard you talk about this once before, Sal. That's why I brought this question in here. It yeah. was popular like yeah. in the like late 80s and early 90s. You used to see it, or at least I did, in the, the gym I used to work well, out. Viagra You'd was see invented in the... In <laughs> Viagra, when was Viagra invented? The late 90s, I think. Was it 90s? Yeah. Oh, yeah. so it must have been 90s. Yeah, I guess, probably... I guess that's right. Late I 90s, be, early I was 2000s. in high school, so you're right. 96. You got yeah, it. So 1996. Was, oh, <laughs> yeah, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Memorized. Yeah. So so uh, it's, it's from a class. These are breakthrough drugs, by the way. Uh, by the way, Viagra was cr originally created as a blood pressure medication. So what it does, it's called a PDE5 inhibitor, and it inhibits this enzyme that breaks down 
nitric oxide. And nitric oxide has some functions in the body, one of which is to dilate blood vessels, so opens and relaxes blood vessels, so more blood can flow through. So they invented it because they said, well, if we open the blood vessels, we'll lower blood pressure. Then when they did the studies, they said, well, it lowers blood pressure a little bit. But we get what these the awesome erections. Yes. What, look at these crazy <laughs> side effects. Everybody's getting boners. Doing this thing. Like, we got a better way to sell this, right? So they sold it that Could way. Could you imagine being part of that? I mean, that just had to have been like one of the most hilarious like, like it's finds working, ever. Doc, like, I don't know. There's did you know minoxidil, the thing that helps grow, regrow hair, was also created as a blood pressure lower. And they also saw a side effect and like, oh, we got something else. We can market yeah, this They must too. have just been cha-ching. Yeah. Yep. You know? Exactly. But anyway, so it, does it work uh, for opening up the blood vessels and improving blood flow? Yes. So theoretically, it should improve your performance. Studies show that it doesn't really improve too much performance except for training at altitude. For some reason, when people go to altitude and they get a drop in performance, taking things like Viagra. Oh, well, I'd imagine that it would also improve the pump, right? It's got to improve the pump. It's, so maybe I mean, maybe not performance. There's maybe. nothing. I can't think of. Okay. all the You could take all the citrulline and arginine and pump boosters you want. Nothing's going to boost your nitric oxide like Viagra. Right. So if you want to get a better pump through that mechanism, then Viagra's got to crush Right, right. I would think that. that. I mean, as long as you're okay with doing bicep curls with a boner, I think it's... Uh, <laughs> you have uh, to be sexually aroused. Yeah. Uh, no, you, you do not. Don't wear a Speedo. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever fucked with Viagra? You do yeah. not have to be aroused. Did you just get a... Yes, you do. Did you just get a boner off of it? No. Oh, no. yeah, dude. I've told you the... Vi I've told you the, on, my Vegas Viagra story that, that when I went to Vegas, the first time I ever experimented with it in my 20s, this is a disclaimer, don't do this. Uh, and I remember someone gave it to me like, oh yeah. So we thought it'd be a good idea. I drank all the two days I was there nonstop, like around the clock. So I wasn't really sober. I come back and sober up from the flight. I'm driving home and it's like, it all kicked in at once. And it you was, must've taken it, a massive it, dose. No, I just took, I took two or three over the course of like, you know, 16 hours. Dude, so you didn't even work while you're there. Right. So I didn't get it while I was there. I was so oh, hammered yeah. that it, like it, it, I never, I never got I an erection there. The whiskey, but then right? I'm driving home from the airport from San Francisco with this thing that just will not go away, dude. And it hurt. It so was that so, could happen. So, yeah. And some people have to go to the hospital for it. But dude, the doses vary on it. So like there's like 25 milligrams can go up to 100 milligrams. And maybe you got the strong ass ones oh, that they yes, give you a yeah, bunch of those. I did that. I don't remember. Yeah. But it, okay. So you know what's interesting? Will it improve performance? Maybe. Uh, is it, oh, it studies also show it can raise testosterone, it can lower estrogen, reduce the risk of stroke, and trip off this, right? If you Google this, look up PDE5 inhibitors and COVID. They're actually looking at these drugs as oh, ways to protect the vascular system wow. when, oh, with wow. an infection of COVID because one of the main you know issues is like these strokes and these damage to your blood vessels. Yeah. And they're actually studying if PDE5 inhibitors are- going to be effective ways to prevent some of those, you know, big <laughs> negative uh, side effects. But yeah, I mean, if you're going to take, I guess, a prescription drug for uh, for better pumps, I mean, I guess Viagra would be it. It's, it's a very expensive way to get a pump. I guess. I mean, drink some more water. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing will give you a better pump than being fully hydrated. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Drink some more water. Next question is from Fabulous Hudson Hornet. What are important lifts or movements that manual laborers should focus on to prevent injury? Yeah. So this is, okay, obviously it depends on the individual. Every individual is a little different. So what I would what recommend to one job person. job you're doing. Well, yeah. I have one right away though. I think that you, sh I think rotational stuff. Yeah. I think um, if you're in manual labor where you're say, lifting yeah. heavy things and it doesn't even matter like what types of heavy things that you're, where I see it or where I saw injuries in clients was always doing something rotate, almost always doing something rotate. Low back injuries yes. dominate, and it, never, it doesn't take a lot of weight. So you could literally be somebody who works at like FedEx, and you're just putting some boxes that mm -hmm. are all under twenty or thirty pounds. But because you're moving dynamically, or you twist and turn a certain way, it, and because you haven't strengthened right. that rot that rotational movement, it doesn't take much to hurt yourself. I was going to add to that. Yeah, core strength uh, That's is is a big component to that because uh, I mean, a lot of uh, these these sort of habits that uh, make you efficient at your job. Like a lot of times uh, you don't consciously think about lifting anymore. You just kind of get in the movement and the momentum of it mm -hmm. uh, and relax the core while you're doing these things where, you know, we strengthen our core and make sure that everything's protected. It'll help to eliminate the back pains and it'll help you to, um, you know, be more effective and have more, um, you know, longevity in your job. Yeah. Well. There's three things I want to say about this because uh, almost 90% of my family does this kind of work and I grew up around it and you would see this all the time and back pain is 
by far the most common issue that these people will run into. There's knee stuff and shoulder stuff, but back pain is yeah. dominant. So core stability, work on core stability. Here's a second one. Reduce visceral body fat. Okay, so visceral body fat is the body fat that's underneath muscle. And in men, oftentimes what you'll see is they'll get a belly, but it's hard. You ever have like an uncle or someone joke with you? Like, oh, you got a big belly. Yeah, but touch it. It's really hard. Yeah, I used to punch my uncle in the stomach. Yeah, that's because body fat's underneath the muscle pushing it out. So the muscle's on top, so it feels hard. So what does this have to do with back problems? When the muscle's being pushed out, it's now being stretched and it loses its ability to stabilize the spine. So if you have a lot of visceral body fat, you start to lose, just like a pregnant woman, when the baby is pushing out the abs and the core, they lose core stability and they start to rely a lot on their hip flexors and a lot on their QL. And these muscles start to, you know, have problems and they start to, you know, get back pain. So those those two things are really, really, uh, really important, I would say. Uh, along those lines, I would add then actually incorporating good hip, hip mobility because many times a lot of that low back pain comes from the inability to rotate and move the hips through yep. its full range of motion. And so what ends up happening is those low back muscles overcompensate for mm -hmm. movements and then you strain it or it's just, it's it's not, you maybe don't hurt it, but then my low back is just, oh, all day it's on fire because it's taking more of the load because your hips aren't being aren't able to take now, that. The third thing I wanted to add to this was, and you see this a lot in, well, not a lot, but you see it often with manual laborers is that they'll wear like uh, back support and it almost, it's like a weight belt. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, it'll have the suspenders coming down it goes around the, you'll see it at Home Depot with some of the workers. And what it does is it, it compresses the midsection and creates some more core stability through outside forces. Here's why that's a bad idea. Even though wearing one probably feels great. You probably put it on, you're like, oh my God, my back doesn't hurt anymore. I'm going to keep wearing this. As your body depends on that, you start to lose strength in your core, making it more susceptible to injury. Not only that, but the way the core stabilizes with an outside device like that, this is true for weight belts as well, as your core pushes out to brace against it. So now it starts to change its recruitment pattern. What does mm -hmm. that mean? You take that belt off. Then you go do some work in the backyard. Don't put your belt on or go play with your kids. And you're actually more, yeah. you're, you're more likely to hurt yourself now. So don't wear those as a way to protect yourself. Strengthen your core the old fashioned so way. So let's be even more specific. So each of us, two exercises. Mm. Two exercises I give, to, generally speaking, I give this, I'm going to give this person. Yeah. So I, my two I'm going to pick is I'm going to pick the Turkish get up. Mm. And then I'll, I'm going to pick a single dumbbell row. So a single dumbbell row with emphasis on the the pulling it all the way back and actually ro rotating in that in that movement. So those are my two. Yeah, I would say like cable chops, you know, for that added rotation, and then also like decline sit ups to just work on the core in general and the abs. Yeah, I would do a plank the right way, right with the pelvic so uh, like pelvis active tilted, plank. A active plank or just a, even a stabilizing plank. And then maybe a, a counter rotation with the cable. So you're standing and then you extend your arm so it increases the tension mm -hmm. and then bring it back to, to create that kind of counter rotation stabilization. But the, the plank one was the one I did most often mm -hmm. uh, with family members. And I would modify it. They would do it off their knees or up on a desk to get started. And that really made a big difference. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. We, can have, we have guides that can help you build muscle, burn body fat, uh, get stronger, improve mobility, even become a better personal trainer. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on social media. Instagram is where we're at most. So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin, me at mindpumpsal, and Adam at mindpumpadam. Adam.